Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 28. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, here we go. Heads up, we've detected copyrighted audio. How is this copyrighted still? The band doesn't make any music anymore. That's like copyrighted Mozart. To be fair, it probably still is copyrighted. Who the fuck is on it making any money off this song? They don't make it. They don't listen to it anymore. Who, who cares? Not bad. Oh, a little bit of a slide. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think this week Maybe next Wednesday or Thursday, I might be watching Gran Turismo movie again. Because why not? Because it was actually really good. Bing, bing, bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, bing, bong, bing, bing, bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, 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 bong. Curious to see what, um, what's it called? lost my train of thought. Stop. Oh, I'm so tired. No way, F1 is overrated. Uh, I'll agree, F1 is overrated. But at the same time, because of the fact that F1 is so fast, it looks more exciting. When there are exciting moments in Formula 1, they're a million times more exciting than other modes. 
For example, NASCAR, right, can have some great moments, but the actual racing, boring as fuck. Let's be honest. Like, and it goes on for a long time. So unless unless you get excitement and like you're a huge like if you're a huge NASCAR nerd, strategies and whatnot, they can be exciting. Yes, I could be wrong. But unless you understand and have a deep knowledge of what NASCAR, how NASCAR works and everything, you ain't gonna get excited over NASCAR. IndyCar is a little more of a spectacle. I think it's the closest to F1 in terms of excitement. But again, it just isn't quite there because it doesn't have that mainstream appeal. World Endurance Championship, too long, unfortunately. It's just long. I think the most exciting and most underrated motorsport because of the fact that it ticks every single box that every single motorsport fan wants is WRC. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. Formula One, they're just like, right, you can't do this now, you can't do this now, and it's just like, well, what's the fucking point? Like, I don't understand the point of Formula One, in all honesty. Oh yeah, by the way, every single team is allowed to innovate, but you can only innovate so much before we just say, right, fuck you. Blank reset. Like, you look at Mercedes. Mercedes had the DAS that was just... It's not even F1 follows a guide. It's like one of... The, you know when you've got, like... When you grow up in school, and everyone had all these trends, and we were all really excited about these trends, and then they got banned. Oh yeah, by the way, you're not allowed to do that. What fucking says who? Why not? Why can I not do that? Remember when you used to bring in those fucking toys that everyone fucking was hyped up over? And then all of a sudden, nope, you're not allowed those, they're banned. So you brought in another one, nope, they're banned. You brought in another one, nope, they're banned. Like, every single thing. It's like that, but for Formula 1. They bring in a new innovation that makes cars so much quicker. Nope. Banned for the next year. Can't use it next year. DAS, for example. Yeah, I can imagine they were cool. But we wouldn't have been able to experience whether they were actually better for cars or worse. Because I can guarantee you they probably said, nope, banned. Because that's all they do. They see these innovations and go, Nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. It's pointless. What's the point in Formula 1? Like, all it is is just open wheel racing. They may as well take a car from the road, take all the body panels off and say, There you go, race that. I would much rather see that, actually. Like, Formula 1 is pointless. That's why I think WRC is the best. Being forced to do at least two pit stops is kind of dumb. I mean, Formula 1 doesn't force you to do two pit stops. It forces you to use two tyre compounds. So, and this again is where Formula 1 is too complicated, but yet unnecessarily complicated at the same time like it, it's dumbed for example right the tyre names so the tyre compound names right the tyre compound names naming everything soft medium and hard fucking stupid because now people who understand the sport don't understand what the tyre compounds are now soft medium and hard Okay, well, we explain why in one track they're using the hard compound and the medium compound and they're going super fast, but now the next track, they're using softs and the mediums don't last at all. 
and the, the reason, like, they don't use Super Soft or Ultra Soft. They basically use different tire compounds. There's eight or nine tire compounds, but they're now called C0 to 8 or something like that. And they take three compounds every race and then say, right, well, this is now soft, medium, and hard. So soft, medium, and hard between races are actually different fucking tires. So before, when they were going to, say, Bahrain and they were taking ultra soft, super soft, and soft, and then you had soft, medium, hards in another track, and then you had ultra soft, soft, and medium. Now they're all just soft, medium, and hard. Which makes sense for a dumb person that's never watched Formula 1 before, that has zero experience with cars, which are not the intended audience for Formula 1, mind you. But for people that have understanding of cars, now makes no sense to us. I look and I'm like, oh, well, I don't, oh, uh, what the fuck, uh, fuck this. Like, the tyre compounds make no sense. But on top of that, people also misunderstand a lot of the rules because of the fact that they're worded in such a stupid way. Like, Formula One is a sport. Fuck off. Like, that's why WRC is better. Because you have a burst of racing for an hour. You have all of the cars. Like, I really think that rallying should become more mainstream. Like, if Sky Sports bought a WRC package, rally would be so much more popular. Instantly. Garen fucking teed. Also, we're going to pick a car. And I'm going to pick the Maserati. MotoGP, I learned that they have to press the front brake and begin in the corner and then switch to the rear brake in the middle of the corner. I mean, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, that's pretty talented. I wouldn't be able to ride a bike. But at the same time, MotoGP is quite boring in terms of a motorsport because of the fact it's just... I will 100% agree, MotoGP more exciting than Formula 1 at the moment. 100%. But compared to rallying... There's no motorsport that can get more exciting than that. There's... Rally drivers are always on the edge. They're always getting close to hitting things. There's constant crashes. There's all sorts. Like, in, in terms of, like, how exciting a sport can be. And especially as the fact, like, you're watching these drivers doing this amazing skills every single time. They're driving insanely good, but you don't find out the result of how well they're doing until the end. So you get this anticipation, you get this excitement, you get this tension building up, and then all of a sudden, oh shit, oh wow, oh fuck. Like, it, it all, it's one of the most exciting. Plus, I can guarantee if cars had, like, computers that could work out and vary the brake balance mid-corners, I bet you cars would be a million times faster in corners as well. They don't do that in Formula 1 because there's regulations that say that they can't do it. But as soon as someone was to have done something like that, they would have stormed the well ahead in the championship. You see the Corvette GT3R? Uh, I think I have as well, yeah. I mean, the Corvettes, they all look the same. I think I could, I think I could get, I think I could, I think I could get. I mean, if it's the same one that's on the cover of the Forza Motorsport game, then yeah, I will have seen it. If it's a different one, then probably not. 
Because obviously they got the Corvette as the cover car, haven't they? I think it's a wrong choice of car for the cover. No spot. Corvette. Pretty shit. Cars are computer making things more efficient, ABS, and all you do is just press the throttle and stomping on brakes. That's what they do in most Formula 1 now anyways. They've got insane traction control systems, that means it's very difficult for you to spin out. And they've got ABS as well. I mean, you think, you look at how Lewis Hamilton locked up his brakes and went straight on. That was because he flicked a switch and when he pressed, he put full braking force into his foot. And he just locked up and went straight on. Because they have a switch that's there to warm up the brakes and the tires. And he left that switch on when he started that race in Baku. I think this was in 2021. Obviously, if he had flicked that off, he would have put that force in and he would have not locked up and driven around like normal. They have so many computers anyways. Again, why it's not as exciting. But you look at WRC, yeah, they've got all the traction control and whatnot. But yeah, they've got like, uh, what's it called? Pictures in Discord. I'll have a look in a second. Yeah, they've got ABS. It's so exciting. I mean, seeing them take these giant cars around dirt tracks, like, it doesn't get more exciting than rallying. Rallying is the peak of motorsport. Rally cross is very close. I saw a video the other day, and I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently in Japan, they do rallies in vans. Like, they take the little K vans, like the mini pickup van, whatever they're called. You know the vans, but they look really tiny compared to like a transit van. Those vans, and they take them and take them rallying. Now, if these are televised things, I want to know where I can watch it so I can watch one now. Because they look so fucking cool. We have four of these cars in I must say. It looks the same as the other one. What do you mean? It's slightly different design, yeah. They look very similar. It's quite cool, but... Ah. Uh, I find one thing about GT3 is it's not very exciting in terms of just... I don't know. I've never been able to watch GC3 racing as much as, like, other motorsport. After I've watched rallying, I can't watch any other motorsport and be as excited as rallying. I'm sorry, it just, it doesn't hit the same. Uh, I need to have a look at this email in a second. Ruins or relics, disciples and the young. Right. We are 40 views away from uh, me giving away a uh, channel membership. If you guys are enjoying the stream, feel free to uh, drop a like, as it really does help support the channel. Shift down, not up. Whoa.
The problem that I have with a lot of motorsports WoW is the fact that I'm going to bring it back to our Sony and Microsoft debate that we had before. There are so many exclusivity deals to do with this stuff. The fact that you can't watch it. Right? I would much rather if they did these deals that you could watch it on um like TV. They were available for people that just watch TV. But what if I watch YouTube? Right? Why should a motorsport be exclusively locked behind a television exclusivity deal? I mean, you look at Sky Sports. I have to pay for a Sky Sports package to be able to watch Sky F1. Even though I can watch it on the Sky F1 app with Sky, I still had to pay for that full package of all that other stuff to be able to watch it. Which is not fair. It's stupid, ridiculously expensive, and just greedy. At least with WRC, you can get BT Sport, which shows some of the WRC races, some of the rallies. And then you also have Rally TV now, which has WRC, ERC, and Rallycross all in one. I actually quite like Rally TV now. I think it's a really good idea. But then you look at other platforms. I mean, some of the motorsports being put on Peacock. Peacock is exclusive in the US. You cannot get it in the UK. Which means, if you put it on a platform like that, you're limited solely to an American audience. Like, no wonder things like NASCAR and IndyCar are so unpopular with European people. is because of the fact they don't fucking want to show it to them. It is really stupid. Oh yeah, I uh, so crude. The only reason I own uh, Motorsport Seven, I had a problem with my disc, which meant I couldn't uh, download it to my Xbox properly anymore. Um, and I also wanted to try out the PC version, and crude had a spare key, so I rooted a VPN to Australia, signed in on my Microsoft account, and obviously crude has given me. Motorsport 7. Uh, this was like two, three years ago. But it was just before it got delisted. But uh, Crude is the reason why I'm able to play Motorsport 7. <laughs> um, I mean, I could have I bought a disc. I could have bought a disc, but yeah, I didn't. Crude gifted me a code. And obviously now I can use use it on PC as well, which is a bonus. Otherwise, I'm, I probably would have spent like 30 quid getting the Ultimate Edition. Got global key from G2A. That's the issue. G2A doesn't show you where the regions for your key worked. Enaba, obviously, site I'm partnered with, so I have to disclaim that I am a partner with them. But uh, Enaba actually shows you what regions, even if it's global, it will say excludes XYZ regions. So, the chances of you buying a key and it not working in that region is slim to none. Destiny is calling me. Because I'm Mr. Dark Side. Right, so after I finish this race, normally what I would do is I'd sit there, get my thumbnails, but I'm going to end the stream once I finish this race. End the stream there and then. Um, because I'm going to turn the PC off for a bit. Have a little rest. And then get the thumbnails. G2 
G2A I've never really had a good experience with. CD keys is okay. But, um... Obviously, some of their keys, they just overpriced. Because they're not by, like, independent sellers, I don't think. I think it's just one seller. And then you have uh, Fanatical, which is actually pretty decent. It's where I bought Starfield from, because obviously, like, Fanatical got keys early for Starfield. I have my key, my Starfield key. I have the ultimate deluxe edition. Instant gaming and Eniba never failed me. Which is why, next time you use Eniba, use my link. And you can help support the channel. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you can. But, yeah, en Eniba's always been very good. I haven't heard of instant gaming, though. So, uh, I might have to give that a, a try. See what that's like. But... No, I've always always got along with Enaba. Every every single time I've used Enaba, always been fine. There, there was one instance where it wasn't, and um, I emailed support and got it instantly sorted out. Got a replacement key. Game is now working again, so. I got too much stuff to play slash finish. I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, I'm still nowhere near finishing F1 23. They've added another season of like content to F1 World, which is, is like, what the fuck? I'm like miles away from that yet. But yeah, they've added more stuff to F1 World. And they've also added um, more stuff to the battle pass. So, this is just a shit ton of stuff to do in F1 now. And I'm still miles away from finishing it. I'm really hoping that F1 World becomes like a... If the servers go offline, it can still be playable. Because F1 World is what like, even if the campaign is just sort of, ah, here's some shit to do, it doesn't give you any rewards. You just complete these missions. That would be good. But Does Teardown actually have a progression, then? Or, like, a story or campaign? Take me away. Bum, 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 bum. It has a story. Ooh. I might have to look into it then. Take me away. Because I know it's all about just destroying shit, isn't it? Pretty much. How well does it run on the Steam Deck? Because if it runs well on the Steam Deck, I'll buy it. I've already bought Car Mechanic Sim today, though. Ah, oh, shit, I forgot about that. Why did I buy it? Now that I think about it. Fuck. Might have to get it next month if it's on sale. And if it's not on sale, uh, probably not then. I don't know. I have to see. The only issue that I'm going to have is once Starfield releases, I'm probably never playing any other game but F123 again. Like, for a while. F123 I've been addicted to. And I've been struggling to play other titles. So once Starfield comes out, if I'm torn between the two... I may not even, like, my entire history of, like, August, September, October, it might just end up being F1, Starfield, F1, Starfield, F1, Starfield. Should be supported. It doesn't have additional launcher side of Steam. Oh, yeah, additional launchers are fine for the Steam Deck. It's whether the game itself and the software itself actually runs. Um, Steam Deck support is a little 
wonky. Because uh, Fallout 4, for example, is a perfectly running game on the Steam Deck, and it's got like two launches. But uh, Fallout 4 works perfectly. As long as you get the right settings before you load the game. Otherwise, you don't have to close it down and load the game again. Take me away. Yeah, so I imagine the Steam Deck would be a little bit shit for that then. Because the Steam Deck's not exactly the best. I mean, it runs F123 on medium graphics at 60 FPS, but... There are still games that it struggles with. Payday 2 runs at 60 FPS, which is crazy to think about. That's quite fun. Doom Eternal sort of runs at 60 FPS. Um, but you have to make sure the settings don't reset itself each time, which I found many times when I've loaded it. They've reset to, like, high ultra graphics. It's like, this is a Steam Deck, not a fucking NASA supercomputer. Chillax on the quality, please. A freak like me just needs infinity. Almost at the end. I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do. And I gotta do it in about an hour, no, two hours, two and a half hours, roughly. That should be fine. Relax. Take your time. Haha. <laughs> so, technically speaking, once this is finished, this will be episode 28. Episode 8 has come out today. So, by the time the next stream's finished, I will probably say that we'll be at a 20 video backlog, which is perfect, exactly what I need. So, woohoo! All right, not bad. I'll take that. Thank you very much. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.